What is the potential of this crisis for the emergence of a 21st century economy? I'm Sinta Osterwal, economist and executive team coach, and I'm asking for thinkers, seers and doers, what now? It's a moment, it's a pause. <clears throat> it's like the world is on a, you know, on your DV. It's a pause button. And mm -hmm. I think we, we have at this very moment, I could, we could speak about all kinds of spiritual stuff, which I'm into as well. But I think it is that moment where it's like when a 9-11 happened. It was a moment of pause, of clarity, of a silence. It's like, so when will humanity stop its frenetic motion mm -hmm. uh, of commerce, of trade, of, you know, working for money? And reflect just for a brief second. There's an opening of conscious of conscience, right? Mm -hmm. That the soul is fully now aware of who we are. Uh, and I hope that's that moment. I mean, it could, of course, it could go the other way, where we just, you know, dissolve into chaos. And 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 I think the danger is the most dangerous thing is not the virus. I think it's fear. Um, but yeah. what friend said, fear is a, an acronym: false evidence appearing real. Um, so I think we have to be very calm and, and committed to unconditional love of our neighbors at this time. Mm -hmm. And we will, I think, also see the revelation that the, the system of money is an illusion, um, that suddenly money will appear out of nowhere to save us all, right, uh, mm -hmm. of our, it's a, it's a remarkable that you think about one month of an economic heart attack and the world is in this death spiral, right, mm -hmm. economically. And we, that reveals to me everything, that the yes. whole thing was a bit of a constructed, uh, uh, was a, const a construction of our imagination, money itself. So mm -hmm. I think I've talked a lot about with Evo and others, right? Yeah. So it gives us pause to reimagine. Yeah. Uh, we, we have to redream uh, yeah. an economy based, I think, on love. I mean, it sounds really out there, but I'm compelled by it. I think it's possible. I know it's possible. Mm -hmm. We've even worked it out on spreadsheets. You know, it it's not like we can't say it's not possible. Mm -hmm. But the question is, what will we do now, you know, yeah. at this moment? And each one of us has an opportunity to act in congruence with the love that we are created to be. Um, so that's why we have to be very, I think, uh, conscious is awareness, right? Mm -hmm. So our awareness is suddenly opened uh, to our vulnerability but also to the importance of relationships and trust and belonging. Those mm -hmm. are the hallmarks of the what I call an economy well-being. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you you wrote a book about all these concepts. You wrote two books actually. Two books, yeah. yeah. And I have a third book. Is yeah. Huh? My third book, my publisher doesn't want to publish yet. It's called Money Grows on Trees. What did I learn as a seven-year-old about money that I, you know now that I'm about to be 60, can reflect on and say, my father, you yeah. would always tease me, he says, what do you think, son, money grows on trees? And I, I discovered, actually, it's true, it does grow on trees, you know, and so <laughs> that's the third book, but maybe I'll just self-publish that or, or podcast it in a series of podcasts. Which, <laughs> okay, well, I'm yeah. looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to that. So so here we are, two economists. Um and, and I have the feeling that uh, we will not speaking about economics. <laughs> no, we <laughs> won't. No, actually, but, but economics as probably, is Manfred an economist as well? No, uh, I, I don't believe so. Maybe he has a background in-, right. in you, you have an economics background? Yeah, I do, yeah. Oh, well, fantastic. Then we could talk about the original Greek notion of economy. Yes. Because uh, oh. there's some wisdom, right, in those, in, in the things that we weren't taught, right? Um, about economics, which I find that's what I've learned in my discovery. My path is like you, you look at the word economy and it means household stewardship, right? And you look at happiness means well-being of your spirit or your soul. So it's like these, these are actually very wise, compelling notions um, that I think we've gotten away from. So. Yeah, I, I, I believe so that we did. Um, and it might be so that this crisis has is is a new opening for us to remember all that mm -hmm. uh, to reintegrate that into a uh, modern day way of doing um, of going about so that's what i really want to speak to you about today and uh, dedicate some time to talk and be in dialogue about 
um, the hopeful timeline. So the the mm -hmm. fear timeline is very evident. It's very clear. Uh, it's very real. Also, mm -hmm. uh, you also mentioned just now uh, the world could 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 be in chaos. Um, and then there's also the opportunity dimension of this crisis. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the earlier interview, the Chinese symbol is, in, inspi is inspiring in this sense to have right. both threat and, and, and opportunity. Yeah, I it. love I love that symbol. Yeah, Having worked yeah. with the Chinese, there's great wisdom in the Chinese um, view of the world. Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems to me quite complete. And uh, I think that a few of us forward thinkers, seers, doers, are the dots, and now it's also time to connect those dots into a timeline uh, of hope that we can maybe uh, focus on. That's right. I just mm -hmm. noticed my mic wasn't actually on. It was unplugged for a minute. Now it's going to get even better. <laughs> just okay, great. Okay. Yeah, let's well, let's just talk about it. Conversation. We're two economists. Yeah. You're a corporate. You're a coach as well, leadership coach, and. Uh, I yeah, am. so so I'm I've delved into that, helping others who are coaching and saying, what do we have to learn? I'm a macroeconomist, so like I don't know, I don't have any advice to give per se, legitimately, right, to individuals. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so let's let's get into this. Um, where do you want to go with? Well, uh, I hope to envision with you what a hopeful timeline would lead us to. So, what would a hopeful future look like? Uh, well, I've, I've written about that in my, The Economy Wellbeing, my second book, mm -hmm. and people said, well, as if the first book, The Economics of Happiness, wasn't enough. And I wrote that first book mm -hmm. in 2007. People said I predicted the crash of 2008. I said I did not. I just know that the system, the money system, is inherently vulnerable. Uh, why? Because it's based on debt money. Uh, and we use a euphemism credit, but actually debt is kind of the enslavement of humanity. And until we wake up to the, this truth, um, and we have to go back to ancient Samaria to discover that these ancient cultures had very clear laws uh, on debt forgiveness. They called them the clean slate laws, which the Jews adopted, called the Jubilee laws. And I said, but not since Roman times have we practiced this wise economics. And why was that important? Because every seven years they forgive debts in Samaria. That would have created a, a refreshing, a reboot of the economic system. Mm -hmm. uh, we see since World War II now that U.S. debt has been doubling roughly every seven years. Okay, yeah. and so we're stuck. We are, and it's it's like the coronavirus. It's right, it's parabolic. The debt uh, curve, yeah. and the question right now is, um, can we reimagine a system in which money is no longer created as debt, but is uh, becomes a kind of utility. Uh, we become each other's bankers in the sense we're going to create money uh, in in whatever amounts we need to do what to not necessarily guaranteed income, but let's mm -hmm. call it a well-being, a well-being for all uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? That means that every one of us has the opportunity to fulfill our calling or our vocation wherever we're here on the planet, not just to go to school to get educated and the word education in Latin educare means to draw forth what's already within you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's the truth of that that word. <clears throat> but to actually pursue our our spiritual, mental, physical, emotional well being, which is the idea of the medicine wheel that indigenous people of Turtle Island, also called North America, have mm -hmm. long understood ten thousand years of that understanding. Uh, and so we have an opportunity to <clears throat> return, <clears throat> excuse me, to those ancient traditions. Uh, indigenous people never had money as such. They used seashells, kauri shells, wampum. They had potlatch ceremonies, which were over-gifting ceremonies. You, and I, you would have a potlatch every five years. Your family would host everybody in mm -hmm. Utrecht or whatever, and we'd have a fantastic feast. But there were so many people in Utrecht, you'd never have to repeat that ceremony, would you, um, yeah. in your mm -hmm. lifetime? So these are the kind of models that exist, um, that existed. And I think we have an opportunity to, um, the Cree nation, the Cree people say every child born is an answer to a prayer. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about is redreaming the world economy. Yeah. Uh, 
And because we're such creative creatures, we could create with all of our, forget artificial intelligence, with all of our human capacities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we not think about a system in which banks and become the facilitators of happiness? Mm -hmm. That money is never scarce ever again. It should never have been scarce in the first place. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that revealed now. Watch mm -hmm. what happens. Mm -hmm. The helicopter money will magically appear, right? Hopefully. Or so that's prediction? What's that? Is, is that your prediction? Uh, of course, it's already happening. They're already yeah. saying, oh, now is the time for guaranteed income. And I'm like, wait a minute. No, no, that, that's a potential trap too. Because mm. I'm talking about releasing, opening up the powers of money creation to all of us. We are yeah. all each other's keeper in a sense. Could we imagine a system in which we collectively, whether it's in Holland or Canada, we say this is how much liquidity we need for our economy to flourish for everybody to flourish, for nature to be resilient, for the carbon footprint to go down, to stop trading and moving stuff around the planet for the sake of money changing hands so a very few people can accumulate more money wealth while the rest of us work for, for money, trading our life energy. So my imagination is every child born, every person born right now in Holland or Canada has about 700,000 hours of life energy to live. Mm -hmm. One hour is the same value for everybody in my mind. What if what if we could, and Steph Coopers and I have talked about this, and he's from Antwerp, because he's mm -hmm. created a, a model called sustainable money. Mm -hmm. and, and we've spoken about this a couple times now in my mm -hmm. podcast is we could play this scenario out in a spreadsheet, in a game, so, yeah. so that we can't say this isn't possible. Uh, and where will it be exercised first and foremost? I think it starts, it has to start in um, The Hague, in London. Why? Because that's the origins of banking. Mm. You know, if you think about, you know, in 1649, William of Orange from Holland, mm. the King of England, you know, established the Bank of England. Uh, what does that mean? Why is that important? Because all roads lead to London and therefore to Amsterdam to now establish a new dream in which money is no longer the master but we are collectively going to co-create the money system that we need so everyone flourishes who is we all of us all of humanity now is it co is a complex system i'm talking about absolutely wouldn't yeah. be fascinating that with a click of a button we would all be voting maybe every quarter as to how much money supply we need Canada to have right now, right? We've got people suffering, or mental illness, whatever. We need, we need, right? We need liquidity. Um, it's interesting the words that we use for money come from nature, liquidity, currency, mm -hmm. banks, right? They're all mm -hmm. water, they're all water, water metaphors. Mm -hmm. So I often need jokes like water can't, if you store up water behind a dam, what happens to it? It putrefies. Money mm -hmm. must, therefore, money must be like water. It must flow along the banks to have true liquidity, true, true currency. Could we model nature? Could nature be the model of our economy? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Economy, the nature teaches resilience. Um, it always moves to point of homeostasis, even in a time of crisis, even when a big fire rips through a forest. Mm -hmm. What do you get two years later? Explosion of life. Right. Yep. So these viruses and Rudolf Steiner said it, viruses are an expression of a toxicity of the cell. Wow, wait a minute. Is the world economy expressing are we as human beings rejecting this money system? Expressing through a virus the toxicity that we all experience, the pain in our souls that we know there's something wrong. There's something unjust. And so, OK. Some of us will die. Some of us will, will feel pain and anxiety and fear. But now is the time, right? Now is the time mm -hmm. to reimagine. And I'm not just talking just pie in the sky. I, again, we play this out in spreadsheets. I played it out for Canada. It's all possible. We literally have to decide whenever, whenever this crisis ends that we're going to do something different. Mm -hmm. But will we? That's the question. Or will the powers to be that have, you know, the, the less than one percenters who are the money power yeah. will relinquish 
their, I would call it uh, their sociopathic, right? Mm -hmm. Lust for more, mm. which is a greed, which is a greed thing. So this is the big challenge. Will those who, who control the systems now, who have all the power, relinquish that and free us all from the slavery of debt money and the slavery of greed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a big question. And it's also a question that's um, outside of ourselves. So you and me, what would, we, what would be, we be able to do today to work towards nature as a model for our economic system, for example? Well, I think we're, we're living out that reality right now in our, with our neighbors. I mean, we're self-isolating. It's remarkable, right? It's like my, our daughters say, like, has this ever happened? He says, no, it's, it's never happened. Not in mm. my lifetime, not my father, who's 85, who lived through the war, right, in Germany. Never happened. Not this, not this kind of global um, pause. So I think individually we can model this, what we might call a reciprocal economy of, of sharing, right, and realize that we, we will have... It's weird that everyone stored up toilet paper. I don't get that. But anyways, maybe because I'm a man, it's like, <laughs> but it's like, you know, that I saw a little video where yeah. the guy's going to get his Starbucks coffee and he's paying in pieces of toilet paper. And he says, can you give me an extra one just for my, my wife? And he puts it, in, you know, it's like, this is how ridiculous. Wait a minute. Trees are abundant. There's, there's not going to be a scarcity of toilet paper, but maybe toilet paper becomes a currency. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, you know, again, from an individual level, I said, I know that we are okay, like as a business person, I have, I've always had this idea that I have to have enough money um, made t for a year of no income at all, because I'm a consultant. I don't know if I'm ever going to get another project. Yeah. I assume I will, but guess what? Life is, my life has been a life of complete dependency and grace. The phone rings just when it's supposed to. And I'm sure you have the same thing. Who would call a coach to give them advice? <laughs> I don't know. Obviously, lots of people. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so I think it's fascinating. Those who and my wife and I have both worked at home for ever since our daughters were small. They don't even know what it means to, for mom and dad to get in the car or public transit to go to work at seven mm -hmm. in the morning. Mm -hmm. We get up, we make a coffee, we have breakfast, we walk the dog you know, we have some clients and, you know, we put in, you know, at best, I probably put in three or four hours of real productive work a day and we have no debt. Um, and so we're outliers. We know we're outliers, but here's a cool thing. I can coach people how to live this way, you know, how to get out of debt, because when you're free of debt, you're free, like you're literally free of mm -hmm. the matrix. And so these are things that we can, I think, explore even in this moment of like wow like because notice in, in one month's time a lot of businesses are failing just one month that means they didn't have enough in in reserve right yeah um or they were not willing to share that reserve with their employees and and that somewhat makes sense right yeah but um again i'm because i'm a macroeconomist i'm i like to think this yeah. very high level how yeah. much will we need right now to get people through yeah. I estimated that in the U.S., the amount of money sitting on the sidelines right now, that they call it the loss in the stock market. But what is it actually? People sold those stocks. Uh, so it went from a $30 trillion valuation, the market cap, before the crash, before this, to $6 trillion now loss mm -hmm. off the table. Yeah. Where is it sitting? It's not a loss, actually. It's sitting in cash. It's sitting in something. And And how much would it... How much would we require to pay every American six weeks of their wages of the average household income? Nine hundred billion dollars one time. So could we kind of convince these people who are sitting on six trillion to distribute some of that to the average households in America who need to get by because right, they, they have no sick leave. They have no parental leave for their kids. Yeah, this would be an act of economic justice. Um, those are things I imagine. But people say, no, you're it's crazy. It's never going to happen. I said, why not? Why not at least pose the question and say, where is that money sitting right now? 
Well, and it provides an opportunity for us to 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 ponder upon or maybe even take action upon is that the redistribution is a possibility now. It's a really real possibility. Um, and I think it's that's a real really possibility. Important. And yeah. the other thing I say is the other thing that's a real possibility that as I'm arguing and showing is that once this is over, we, we really need to st stop and have a conversation about how does the money get created in the first place? Like, how does the sausage get made? Because people are completely naive about that. When I yep. tell them that 98% of the money is created by banks when they issue loans, they're like, what? That means the banks have a monopoly on the creation of money, not the central bank. The central bank plays a role. But so what does this mean then in terms of what we will do on Monday differently than we've done in the last 50 years? Is could we not then imagine that we create money, the banks still play a role, but we're creating money in relationship to our needs and our gifts, our time, right? Mm -hmm. So now time is the only medium of exchange and the only basis of value. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I've called this this model um, soul printing. So soul printing being each one of us, I just said each one of us has say 700,000 hours of life to live. If we mm -hmm. live to a statistical life age of 82 years and that means in our in my wallet, in my when I'm born, when your daughter's born or whatever, you have seven hundred thousand hours of credit of right of real time. Mm -hmm. uh, a third of that you'll probably sleep, um, you know. But the other, what 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 happens to the other hours? How do you exchange them to help each other in this world of helping each other's souls develop? Or, yeah. You know, in the truest sense of that word. Yeah. That is an interesting platform, and I've played it out as a digital cryptocurrency idea. Okay, mm -hmm. am I getting attention? N not yet. People are like, "Oh, that's really cute," but no one's going to play that game. I said, "Why not? Like, how how could this platform work?" Mm -hmm. Because right now, money's magically created, in, you know, banks create loans. The thing is just con completely spirals, goes exponential, right? Because it's all debt, and the debt can't be repaid ever in its entirety so we're stuck right we have a we're stuck yep. we, yep. so we have to we have to think about a system which money is always being created in relationship to life energy yeah right? every child born every well, I'd, like to, I'd like to get back to that idea of, of creation of money uh in alignment with our needs our gifts and our time mm -hmm. so this for me um one of the perspectives maybe one of the biggest perspectives that we have uh, that we can um, uh, take action upon now already because uh, the situation in the world provides us the space and the time but maybe even the time uh, the it's time for reflection um, mm -hmm. it comes naturally for us to give from our talents to give from our time to um, um, see to each other's needs right it's right just absolutely and i and i think thing. i think what's exciting about having these conversations and hopefully we have a big listening audience but i'm not guaranteed it's going to make the big media because it probably won't but you know imagine if a million people were listening to this pod this conversation right now mm -hmm. it it will raise consciousness and awareness that something new is possible i don't care if you're in jakarta singapore beijing Rotterdam, yeah. right? Yeah. Because pe people need to wake up to uh, that we we are the masters of this system. We can redream it and reimagine it. And the fact if we don't have the conversation now, if we don't put it into the into the consciousness and awareness of people. The window will close again it, because what will happen in my the cynical side of me says, "Oh, wait a minute, this is a consolidation game." Mm -hmm. You know that there's that theory that every don't don't miss the opportunity of any crisis because a crisis is thesis antithesis synthesis. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the desired synthesis in a crisis? Don't know. It could be that the big boys and they're mostly men, I would say, are are simply looking for an opportunity to consolidate. They will they will want they will call upon a digital global you know um, integrated system. Right, where there's no need for U.S. dollars anymore. Mm. You, you you don't want to touch cash because it could contain the virus. Right, that's already happening. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So there's that kind of cynical side going, hmm, if you're playing chess here, we're, we're playing for humanity's soul here. So yeah. let's think about, watch what happens. Mm-hmm. See if that, that starts to get presented as a thought, a, as an argument. And we yeah. have to say, no, that is not the conversation we should be having right now. I'm sorry. Yeah. And maybe there's only a hundred of these men. Mm-hmm. If that, who are like calling the shots. I'm like, no, that's not acceptable. There's 7 billion of us. Yeah. Right. And, and so well, that's what matters, isn't it? It's, that's, that. and, but the challenge is how do you, how do you create, you know, the, the space mm-hmm. for 7 billion souls to go wake up and realize that we're each other's keepers. Like we're not stuck in a matrix that is not our construction or we're complicit in it because only because we're ignorant maybe. Uh, but once we're aware, as Henry Ford said, if people were aware how money was created, there would be a revolution tomorrow. <laughs> he said that, you know, Henry Ford. Yeah. I said, there's no revolution happening in America. You don't think so? No, they're all asleep. <laughs> all of them. Do we all need to be awake? Yeah. Or, do, yeah. or is, is it necessary for a critical mass to be awake in, in order for a, a greater mass to be able to follow? No. I think one person awake is uh, is sufficient to get going. Right? Mm-hmm. You're awake, Evo's awake, Falco's mm-hmm. awake, Falkenberg, hopefully. I think Falk was awake, you know, who is Falko Valkenberg? He's an influential person on the European Pension Fund, right? He's an actuarial. He's awake. Mm-hmm. Uh, Satish Kumar is awake. I mean, there's lots of people who are awake. Um, and, and the truth, this is the truth, is one person awake, exercising their spiritual gifts, can change the world. My mother Teresa changed Calcutta. Mm-hmm. Why? Because she was a high consciousness person. Mm-hmm. She, she lived a life of unconditional love. That's what that's what this will take. A strategy mm-hmm. of raising individual and collective consciousness. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and how do you do that? By by trying to stay in love, right? By not getting sucked into the vortex of fear, apathy, despair, because those are lower realms of consciousness. Mm-hmm. And I know a little bit about consciousness. I've studied it. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, this this can be an individual journey, an individual strategy. Of just experiencing, we talked to start with joy. When you mm-hmm. experience joy, what does your heart feel? You know what it feels like. I don't care if you're playing music, you're playing with your daughter, you're t- learning, teaching her to ride a bicycle. Mm-hmm. You know, it's those moments like, wait a minute, I'm paying attention to this this heart flutter, right? That is a sign that, wait a minute, this is possible. And this is a human reality. And And can we find more moments in which joy can be? Mm-hmm. physically experienced and and then we keep going to that you keep right and and you keep trying to stay in that zone it's like a band with the joy of consciousness that is hard to stay in especially when the world is in you know in this pandemic uh fear yeah it's it's it's, it's taking it it takes a lot of courage to stay there and to persist it does to take yeah. up the uncertainty that comes with it because you exclude yourself from a certain uh, system that might help you survive because you choose to not survive but to thrive and to live that's that's i think what it means to follow your joy Um, but just uh, a couple of minutes ago you spoke about you have a a bit of a buffer a reserve um, for about a year so you've taken care of yourself really well. Um, and I'm just wondering, um, doesn't I, I, that... That sounds, that sounds very self-centered, right? Oh, no, we're okay. Not at all. It's, we're it's, okay. It's, but it could be. It could be viewed that way. Oh, you're... You, you know, my wife always tells me, like, don't talk about our situation. And I said, why? Because I... But the truth is I want every one of my neighbors to have the same experience. And I know it's possible. You know, I always said, imagine a world without employees. What? What, what do you mean? It's like, no, we're, we're each independent. You're, you're a coach of people. I'm an independent business person. We're all independent in the sense of, 
you know, sometimes we need social organizations called workplaces. Um, but I want all my neighbors to experience the joy I've been living with for 15 years. I feel like I left the matrix a long time ago. Mm. But then I wake up and I was like, I still have a responsibility to my neighbor because they're still living in the slave system. And, it, and the slave system is completely unnecessary. It, it is a, is a frustration. I wake up every day and I'm like, why is this persisting? You know, I'm, you know, work building on people's fears, actually creating conditions of fear. And it's completely stupid. It's just stupid. And, and it's, it's unnecessary and we can create a better system. Uh, again, which nobody ever wakes up again feeling anxious about money. It's, it's a waste of human energy. And, and that's, that's what drives. We can the new, and I know it. And, and the question is, how do we, basically, I think we have to experience literally, this is what Steph Coopers is doing. He, he plays a game and, and he goes across the hall and he plays a money game. And he has people experience what it's like to actually share in abundance. Mm -hmm. So just by literally creating tokens and, and people are amazed at what they experience, what they feel. They don't feel like they have to hoard anymore. There's always enough. Like there's always, it's like playing poker and your chips never run out. And I'm like, can we, can we scale this stuff? Was because what you're describing as a stable money system is so compelling. And yeah. you're an IT guy, you know that from a systems perspective, we can, we can scale this, this game that you're playing now. But we first have to experience the possibility, I think. Well, and aren't we now experiencing a possibility? Are we not now uh, getting a perspective about ourselves uh, as part of a larger whole and how influential uh, the, the, the most logical way of being is just ca taking care of each other? Um, um, yes, we're hard, we're hardwired to be compassionate. Exactly. We're not, you know, I, I reject Ayn Rand's, you know, notion that we're just narcissistic, you know, uh, mean spirited. I mean, I think she had a chip on her shoulder, but she influenced so many important people like Alan Greenspan and her notion that human beings are not altruistic. She rejected that notion. I'm like, That's ridiculous. How, that can't be if we're created, if we, if we are creatures of love, that cannot be. I mean, she had interesting comments on love too. But when I read Anne Rand, I'm like, that one person influenced so much thinking in in our economic sphere. You know, Milton Friedman, Alan Green, all were devotees of one woman, Anne Rand, a Russian, you know, immigrant, who was was angry because her family lost all the wealth, right, in the revolution. Um, but anyways, that's so. I think we have to follow the trail and find out where, where does this consciousness arise, right? This kind of mean-spirited, you know, uh, self, self individual, you know, greed, you know, where is it? Because it's, it's not congruent with our humanity. Or, or I think that's the question. Oh, that's the kind of point I'm trying to make. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be a question, but uh, I think that's not the question that we're exploring at this moment. I think that no. with, by being in dialogue about redreaming re the the future, we're already moving beyond that question, and yes. we're already being in consensus with um, the the hopeful side of humanity and the capable mm -hmm. side of humanity, yes. Yes. emotionally intelligent side of humanity. And if we can uh, amplify that. I think we're really doing a good job. <laughs> Maybe just by uh, the people that are watching this and might feel inspired to uh, stand tall in the way they are being right now. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. I mean, also my appeal is to the Chinese people because mm -hmm. I've worked with the Chinese and um, they remind us they have a 5,000 year civilization grounded on two important kind of spiritualities, Confucianism, which is very pragmatic, which they they adopted, the Chinese adopted Xiao Kang. Xiao Kang is a Confucian word, which means moderately well-off Chinese. It means well-being, right? So what, China's adopted a well-being economy already? Uh, back in 1979, 
mm. and and Taoism, right? So Taoism being about harmony, about yin and yang, about uh, eight attributes of the of the person of the being. These are fundamental. These were the fundamental building blocks of the Qing dynasty, which was Emperor Qianlong's great, the great emperor. Qing means happiness, actually. Mm -hmm. And it was the emperor that the British came and, and tried to free trade and ultimately destroyed. Right? So my appeal is don't forget your ancient past and the wisdom that you still carry in Taoism and Confucianism combined. You have this kind of strong spiritual foundation with a pragmatic Confucian kind of way of, of, of being. And I think China, in a way, although this virus came out of Wuhan, what's fascinating me as uh, in observing this, I said, one day China is going to stop exporting stuff to the West mm. because one day they will have achieved everything they need. In 10, 12, 15 years, look what they've done. Why? Because they have a money system that Abraham Lincoln proposed and was killed for, uh, and they adopted it. And and therefore, they can pursue this economy of well-being, the Shao Kong economy, um, and 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 outflank the West, which is stuck on debt. So that's this was going to be so fascinating. Mm -hmm. And and out of us in a region in Wuhan, where manufacturing all the Western goods, or a great majority, come from now. Mm -hmm. So again, a pause, an interesting disruption of the supply lines, which were so dependent. We know that we were all like one month away from personal bankruptcy. Mm. A lot of us, right? Yep. Or, or these supply lines from Wuhan. What happens? The drugs don't come. The, we, we, what we're going to have to reimagine is we're going to have to reread Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations and say, no, no, Adam Smith talked about regional resilience. You produce what's great in Holland. Maybe, maybe most yeah. people, may, maybe people don't can't eat tulip bulbs, but you can produce great tulips. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> but th this is a fascinating notion: is what if this this heart attack now points um, shines a light on the importance of regional resilience? I mean, living off of nature's capacity. So to the extent we can live on a 100 kilometer radius of our communities with, say, 80 percent of our needs met. OK, we'll still want oranges and whatever bananas. We can't grow them in Holland, but or coffee or, you know, but yeah. th this is kind of what I've been playing out, saying, what, why are we so compelled by this global trade model, which is moving stuff around, releasing all kinds of carbon dioxide? It's not making us happier. And what if we stop and re I, if I created a spreadsheet right now, I could show you that mm -hmm. the global trade system is mostly unnecessary. So if I say China, I look at China, it's like, how much land do they have for growing rice and vegetables and stuff? And you got 1.3 billion people. Could they live just on their land footprint? Probably not, mm -hmm. but, you know, could Holland? No. Uh, but under different lifestyle conditions Holland could and so Adam Smith talked about that he said you trade we trade in our our regional uh, natural advantages those natural advantages are our na are nature advantages they're land advantages right mm -hmm. that's why you trade yeah so again th these stories we didn't we didn't learn them right did you did you ever hear that in in economics when you were studying economics I just wanted to mention it because <laughs> what you're saying is you're 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 uh, making an, an appeal uh, on um, knowing as a person as an individual what you need and to to really know what you need um, and not consume over consume uh, so we really need to get back to the drawing table and um, that's that's going to be really difficult it, of but course it, isn't it fascinating right now what what are we doing we're, we're checking a grocery list and like if we yeah. had to just live in this house for one month without yeah. ever going shopping again yeah. for 30 days, what would we eat? Exactly. Well, I got lots of rice. I got potatoes. I got sweet potatoes. I got coffee. Oh, we need more coffee, I think. Right. Yeah. So we say we got to go out. And, but it's fascinating, right? We have to re-examine. Very going Completely. Because in studying economics, um, I never encountered <laughs> the word <laughs> of, 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 well, I encountered the word of need as in wanting. Uh, 
and um, uh, the commercialized uh, in a commercialized sense um, and scarcity of course um, and yes. I think that we have created a culture that's rooted in those um, ideas right that makes it really very difficult and maybe maybe I don't want to I don't have the, the truth but this crisis is so severe that we really need to get go back to that drawing board and see so uh, what do mm -hmm. we need to live and what is important in our lives uh, and then we end up indeed finding out that it's not um, uh, what we have thought that it was, and that's Isn't that beautiful. Wow, fascinating! You know, I'm is. so humbled by. I know. By I get I get goosebumps just thinking. I mean, it's, it's true. Yeah. It's like the difference between in the economic language needs versus wants. You yes. know, most of us for the a good friend and mentor Peter Block in, in in Cincinnati said, "This is the end of the age of convenience." It's you know we've been living in this realm of wants for so long. The West we have more than enough stuff. And, and now we have to like, what was my basic needs? I need toilet paper, I need potatoes. I need, you know, I want to make soup. I, I'm making bread, you know, like you, you're doing stuff that you would have not done, right? Uh, even me, even working at home, like I made bread. It's like, so what? Well, but also it's, it's um, you know, thinking about macroeconomic aspects of life and, and, and how the world works is really, um, it's, inter it's, it, it's interesting and it's mentally challenging, but it's also not really personal per se. No. So I think that now um, it is becoming really personal. It's, it's right just in our faces that we are related to what we've created. Uh, and I, yeah, and I think that's an answer to, you know, if I was a central, if I was the Bank of England, the governor right now, and, and I'm just, I'm actually, I'm broadcasting, right? It's funny seeing these comedians, talk show hosts, like broadcasting from their homes, their kids are running behind them. They're like, oh, they're real people. They have children. <laughs> they have pets, you know. <laughs> Mark Carney, you know, he was, he was from Edmonton, right? Yeah. And, and, and I see the new Bank of England governors like oh my like what a terrible time to become the new governor but whatever I said you know <laughs> imagine that I know Mark Carney like I probably grew up next we went to the same high school right and I would think he's as real as I am and so to be talking to Mark Carney right now is like what are you doing Mark well uh, from a microeconomic perspective uh, you know we're we're holed up we're self isolated and you know okay so let's scale this what what's what's actually happening people are realizing maybe they only need 80% of their income to meet their basic needs. Mm -hmm. All right, but so we got a 20% reduction in the, the want piece. Um, okay, what about the analysis I did uh, and I keep doing is how much of our annual income is going, to, is going towards hidden interest charges on yeah. everything? 53 cents on every dollar American households will earn today well, let's say in December, we're, we'll go to interest charges on the accumulated debt, which is $73 trillion. Mm. What? Uh, you mean, if, but if I eliminated that, I would go to, you're saying basically implications, I'm going to go from a five-day work week to a two-and-a-half-day work week. So, so everyone's rejoicing, oh, the air quality is better because there's less emissions. Well, this is, a, this is an interesting uh, experience. If if I were to argue that 50, you know, GDP and greenhouse gas emissions are directly correlated, and I reduced 50% of the reason you have to work, yeah, just by changing the money system and who creates it, I've I've gone way past coronavirus right yeah. now, In, instantly. And the question is, so how do we solve this climate crisis? Nobody's talking about the money system. It's not in the sustainable development goals. It's not in the IPCC models. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I was like, we, so, so already we're seeing the impacts of one virus, one yeah. pandemic, um, that this money pandemic is, to me, equally as interesting. Again, yeah. whether we can do anything about this with our little conversation, um, hopefully. Mm -hmm. 
people are saying, okay, I, what I know now is people have the time to listen to our conversation because what else are they doing? They're watching Netflix or, you know, <laughs> making babies. I, I think that the, the the population will explode. You'll see in nine months, it's going to blip. <laughs> anyway, maybe. 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 Well, anyway, if, 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 if anything, that I think a dialogue like this um, is, is um, something that um, is, we're able to have this conversation at this moment. I don't think we were able to have this conversation per se like a year ago or maybe two years ago. Um, I think uh, actually no, I, I I disagree. I think we we could have had it, but no one would be listening. It would exactly. be busy. Everyone's but busy. Busy, but also maybe um, in a different mind state, you're not able to hear what is being said at this moment. Because again, here we are, two economists, quite sensible people, uh, speaking about what is essential in change and tran transformation. And yeah, you've mentioned how the uh, money system uh, can be reorganized in such a way that it also will address the climate, um, all climate issues, um, surely. But we've also spoken about what's underneath that as a driver of that change, of the willingness to make a change in the money system. And that's that has nothing to do with money itself. It has everything to do with uh, how we go about life and how we value life. And that's, to me, uh, an amazingly valuable thing to be speaking about. And well, I, I, and, I, and I I wanted to reflect on that word value because as economists, I mean, it's kind of cool. I, I mean, I didn't know you were an economist. So like, wow, we're, we're just economists talking to economists. Like, how novel is that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and we're not disagreeing. Anyways, but uh Think of that word value, you know, in economics, we always, I was like, we kind of laughed at me. It's like, the, you know, the y-axis always had value expressed as a snake around a stick, the dollar sign. And then we had quantity on the, on the x-axis. And then something hit me, you know, years ago. I was like, what is the dollar, you know, what is this snake around the stick thing? What is that anyways? How do we, why do we believe that that's an expression of value? When the word value in Latin means valorum, means to be worthy or to be strong. That doesn't necessarily equate to monetary value alone, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I find that fascinating as an economist. What is value? What is utility? You know, we talk about utility. Oh, what, what is a util? What is a unit of utility? Do we ever debate that in economics? Not that I remember. Maybe Bentham or, you know, uh, what's his name? You know, John Stuart Mill's talk mm -hmm. about utility but we're yeah. just like uh, utility <clears throat> value like so the, again another interesting thing to re rethink reimagine well it's 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 it has been easy for us hasn't it to just create an image of man homo economicus and then just um use that as uh, the, the way to go about our our uh, our, our our science yeah uh, and, and, but and then as an economist, I must say, uh, existentially, uh, I've gone through a crisis because I, I'm, I have, I've, I've been trained in a very traditional way, but I've been completely unprepared for what's, uh, what's going on right now. And so I mm -hmm. really re-identify um, myself or re reutilize <laughs> my knowledge and, and, and reframe everything I know which is for me a relief, but I, I believe for many economists, uh, it's not. Uh, but for me, <laughs> for me, because I really like to zoom in because I find it fascinating, absolutely fascinating that human consciousness um, is, is, is a much um, stronger factor. Um, and, 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 and to, it's to look at, yeah, to look at and, human and consciousness, to look yeah. it, it's creating, recreating a new image of man um, that is, um, um, uh, what's the word, um, that economy should evolve around, you know, the, the, the real meaning of, of being human. Yeah. I mean, the, the study of consciousness is fascinating. It's uh, very, I don't think many people have, have uh, heard of David R. Hawkins, who wrote a book called Power Versus Force. And, um, mm -hmm. And it's it's a book. I mean, he was a clinical psychiatrist, and so he studies 
starts to study consciousness and starts to go into loving kindness and conditional love with some of his patients in New York and some of his catatonic patients woke up they came out of their state and and as his patient load exploded so he escaped he ran away to Sedona Arizona mm -hmm. to then study this what's going on how is it that if I go into loving kindness that these people wake up it's got to be something about my my state of whatever right and so he then says he writes a thesis on consciousness and says consciousness is actually an interesting, you know, logarithmic function from the lower depths of, you know, fear and apathy to this higher levels of enlightenment, mm -hmm. you know, Buddha, Christ consciousness, right, uh, which he defined as a scale, right, from one to a thousand. But he said it's very difficult to move up this up the continuum. As we know, like it's hard to stay in. Can you stay in unconditional love? Not for very long. Um, but you could sure try to practice that. And so I've been, I've been very intrigued as an, as an economist about this whole, because we're numbers people, right? We, you know, so I was like, wait a minute, maybe the, it could it be possible that, and the, the, what he said is because conscious is logarithmic, there's a distribution effect here. So someone like Mother Teresa, who is clear, was arguably in a very high consciousness spectrum. Um, her whole vocation was just picking up that next person in Calcutta, right, with no questions asked, mm -hmm. recognizing that person is a, has dignity and will die, and so I will. I, I see, I see Jesus in that person, and I pick them mm -hmm. up, right? and I and I said, wait a minute, that Mother Teresa had an effect, an impact on millions of Calcuttans because she, by her volition, chose that kind of vocation. Right? And I said that, that that has to be true then of of anyone in any culture in which consciousness is, you know, rather sometimes inequitably distributed. So that's why I said the power of prayer is really important. It, right to stay in a contemplative state, uh, or to try to maintain that awareness, conscious awareness, right, of the divine is really important. That is has to be our survival. A strategy. So I've been playing with that, saying that's the game, isn't it, to try to raise global consciousness. But now, we're, of course, we've just we, the whole thing is modulated downwards, right? Of course it has. Mm. We could feel it. We can. We know it's happening. Um, so how do we create again what you're talking about? Uh, a platform for hope. Uh, you know, hope, joy, or can we? Can we as humanity? Will we ever grow up? Uh, you know, I'm hopeful. People like you, Evo, like some mm -hmm. people think we're crazy, but it's like, no, I'm not crazy. I'm just. <laughs> I, I stopped uh, finding that important. <laughs> <laughs> you Anyways, know? I, all, when all you to say, think about creating a money system based on needs, gifts and time, um, uh, I think that's worth living and uh, doing, and uh, thus the money money system will be created. Because uh, look at us, you know, it's um, but, great examples but, of. I think. Yeah, I think. But your point is also well taken. We have to, even in our, let, let's say in a month's time, this is all over, or two months, whatever, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, if we can spend the time imagining or dreaming a new system, not just dreaming it, but playing it out like I do, I, I do it in Excel spreadsheets. I was like, look, I can show you that it's possible to create money without interest. Like I, I can show you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's happening in Sweden in a little bank there. And uh, mm -hmm. could we create lending circles, right? Right now, like who's in who's in crisis? Oh, you need a month of income to get you by. Can I, can I lend you money without expectation? Me and you, right? I'll just transfer you money. Knowing that I trust you, that in th six months time you'll repay me i i don't want anything i don't want any interest i'm not the bank i'm just giving you because you're in need right now um that's an experience now that we become each other's bankers and i think we can do that we can look at existing banks say who's ready who's the higher conscious banks in this world banks are very low conscious entities i know that i've mm. measured them mm. 
Is Tridios Bank the bank you want to start? Maybe their little higher consciousness. They yeah. they maybe at the Bella Bank in 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 Ohio. Now I'm talking to you. Mm-hmm. What what do you want? What are you imagining? We're imagining being the bank of love. Like what? What do you mean? The, the conversation would have never happened three months ago. Mm-hmm. Some happened this conversation. Your your whole model is based on love. Yeah, is is that kind of crazy? No, no, the, it's perfect timing, <laughs> right? And I'm like, is, so is, is, again, is, again, we yeah. need to tell the stories. Like, these things are happening right now. Like these these practical right systems and models. Yeah. Can yeah. I get the European uh, pension fund managers <clears throat> and convince them that, wait a minute, stop chasing returns. Your, your only return is the well-being of Europeans. That's all I care about. That is your bottom line. You know, yeah. Falco, Valkenberg, you advise, you know, what does that mean? You know what it means. I, I, I'm not an expert in, in fund management. Yeah. But can we orient our, our, our pension funds or our investments in terms of a well-being impact. Yeah, we yeah. can. We yeah. can create those criteria right now. Yeah. But those those things seem to be um, uh, in comparison to what needs to be done. These things might be relatively easy to do, to to think of, to to be creative in. Um, but what you're speaking about just a couple of minutes ago is trust, and to reinstate trust might be a more difficult thing to do absolutely you're spot on it's trust right because you'll say well why should i trust my neighbor no no because that's what the economics that's what economics has taught us right self-isolate yeah. what does economics teach us you know be your own little uh, castle and put up a fence with your neighbors and and only you know protect yourself against the mean-spirited world because everyone is inherently greedy it's not true it's false yeah. Mm. And, and so this is why the indigenous people are our teachers because they talk about all my relations. What does that mean? Everything is relational. Everything is seven generational thinking. I think about my ancestors and my great great grandchildren and the decisions I make today. I think about my relationship with nature because nature is the model of abundance and I'm dependent on nature and the relationship. That's what they say. All right. So. How do we engender trust? It's absolutely, it's absolutely correct because we're conditioned not to trust. Mm-hmm. And, and yet we trust a system that creates, as we just said, re- reveals something so stunning that the banks create 98% of the money and we trust that there's always enough in the system to pay us our wages. It's, it's remarkable. It's magical that it actually happens, that it continues without interruption, except now, now it's interrupted. So we've trusted a system that we don't even understand how it works. And now we're called to ask, I'm asking people to trust each other, to share in their their financial material wealth and expect no return, except a smile or a, or maybe a reciprocal thank you 10 years later. I think that's the challenge we face as human beings. Do we actually trust? Yeah. Yeah. And to, to take back, to claim maybe even our nature. Yes, to claim <laughs> our nature, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I was I like always reflecting on that. It's like, love is who we are. That is our nature. Mm. Everything else is false. Mm. Well, everything else is a distraction from that truth. Yeah. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the cherry on top, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So I think we um, we need to uh, we don't need to but uh, we can, we can I, close I, off this. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So I want, I want to thank you. Yeah, and um, uh, we're just gonna say goodbye uh, on on video, but we'll we'll speak a little bit more. Uh, um, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. For sure. So thank you so much, Mark, for your insights. Thank you, Shinta. For really our conversation. It was wonderful talking to an enlightened economist. So. <laughs> and a young mother. <laughs> yeah, that's that's sometimes that uh, really. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I was like what? <laughs> so thanks, Mark. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. So I'll edit it here, and then uh, yeah. the rest of the conversation I won't. Perfect. Yeah.
and you're you're posting this on uh, just on like LinkedIn or what's your plan? Yeah. Well, the plan was to think it a bit through, but um, uh, this morning I spoke to Manfred, so uh, and he posted it already. So I had to rush. I know. I noticed. Well, post. I went. I went to his LinkedIn. I was like, wait a minute, he's already posting, and you haven't posted yet. You're like, no. upcoming uh, is Mark. Yeah. Wait, where's? Yeah. <laughs> but I know this because I podcast too. It's like, wait. So my friends are like, when are you when are you publishing the podcast? I said, well, hold on, hold on a minute. Like, first of all, I got to you know do my editing and then. And I do everything audio anyway. I don't like video is just, I mean, I record in video, but it's like, uh -huh. that's, that's a little bit too much. Though yeah. Skype is, I actually stopped using Skype, but I see it. Do you have an account that allows you to record or is it just part of the, now the package? I just have a regular account. So yeah. it just, uh, belong yes, it's, it's quite before. okay. Quality, the, quality is of course not perfect, but. Uh, no, but it's Microsoft, you know, it's a Microsoft product now. And so. But you know what I learned from this morning is um, the, the perfection in imperfection. So mm -hmm. um, uh, we hadn't agreed to him posting it before me. So I had asked him to, to hold on for a second. Mm -hmm. But then again, I was, I was thinking, you know, this really gives me um, no time at all to make it more perfect or whatever, which has beauty in it. You know, it's that so it's beautiful. I, I, I yeah. That I was going to say that's what I find with my podcast. They say, what do you want to talk about? I said, I don't know, just your life story so far. I mean, right. And you don't know where it's going to go. And so an hour later, you're like, wow, like that was unbelievable. Like, and it, it was completely unstructured in the sense of, you know, yeah. you, because I just assume people will talk from their passion and they'll like yesterday, I met the most extraordinary man through my friend, Anika Malik, who, who's Pakistani, lives in London. Mm -hmm. And she said, I just podcast and, and she's inspired by my podcast. She says, uh, and she's a Sufi mystic and she's an amazing woman in, into banking and stuff. And um, so she started this podcast called um, uh, Hirjat or something. It's a, it's a word in Arabic about uh, people who are, who, who have immigrated or, you know, they've, they've come from somewhere else, right? And they're living wherever. And so she she has this man on yesterday who is the most extraordinary person. I have, well, I've met extraordinary people, but this is a man who lived inside of BCCI, the most important bank. I know you're still recording, I can see, but uh, yeah. it's okay. Do um, you want me to stop? No, 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 it's fine. Okay. Um, just that this isn't on, but this isn't re revealed. So he's an 82-year-old man who, who had, uh, five years old age. I'll stop uh, recording, by the way. If you no, know. no, it's it's fine. No, it's fine. Yeah? Any, and, and Nika says, "Do you want to? Do you want to meet him?" And I said, "Of course." And I just, you know, <laughs> just I just immediately WhatsApped him, and, and we spoke for an hour and a half, and it was it was so extraordinary. He says, "When I was five, uh, I had a near death experience during the mm -hmm. Blitz of London, and then at seven, I had a uh, an illness." That put me out of school for 18 months. Mm. I am completely unschooled. I have no education. Mm. I learned, I had to learn how to do math. I became one of the top people of Financial Times. <laughs> I was invited into the highest echelons of banking world. Right up to B BCCI, the apex. Yeah. Right? Of the yeah. matrix. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, then he, and then he got attacked. Because he wanted to bring love consciousness right mm. mysticism into the banking world oh yeah. was he out of line and he got hammered his son died in in australia you know freak so he said i have suffered have you suffered mark is it no not like i have that. not i have not been attacked like that i know the enemy but i do not you know i have not succumbed to except yesterday i was kind of something happened yesterday because i just knew like we're stepping on toes here uh, mm. Just by talking, I said, your story is amazing, mm. John. Like, do your children, do your grandchildren listen to your story? No, they're like, we're, we're too busy, Grandpa. It's like, are you kidding me? Uh -huh. Your stories. He says, "Isn't it sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? And I said, it's not unbelievable. You, mm. you have been in the inner sanctum of the system. Yeah. You're like Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> You're a living Lawrence of Arabia, right? Or... Indiana Jones, who's like, <laughs> and I'm like, 
we so Anika and I are Monday we're going to podcast we're, the three of us are going to go into conversation oh great I'm going to listen to that yeah and it's, it'll and I'll I'll just post it on my podcast but anyways yeah. just to say that these people have so many amazing stories and oh yeah whoa, <laughs> whoa. Yeah. true very true yeah yeah, yeah. wow so, well it's probably getting to be dinner time for you and I was just coffee. Yeah. <laughs> what time? Is, how long have we been talking? Like for, uh, for about wow. an hour and uh, fifteen minutes. Jeez. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's it's weird. It's interesting how it after an hour it just feels like okay we're it's enough, right? Yeah, it does, huh? Well, yeah. I could speak to you for days, I think, but oh, um, of course. For I the mean, purpose of this, uh, yeah, I, I've really uh, started to uh, b- before I do an interview, uh, I meditate and I st- I align myself with what wants to come forth, and um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm, re- I'm really continuously focused on what the timeline wants to say or what the future wants to say. So become really future uh, futures literate, literate mm-hmm. to, to be able to hear it and. Sometimes, um, you know, this is just enough and then to, to, to serve that purpose and the rest is just to... Uh... Well, I know. I've had a, I mean, it's just in, in private, but, you know, I'm, a, I'm raised Catholic. I would say I'm a, I'm a practical mystic, maybe if there's such a word. And mm-hmm. so waking up this morning at 1.30 was like, hmm. And I wake up like, boom, right? It's like, and, uh, but I know it's a time... For me to pray so um and i could pray for souls like I have, a, I have a natural apparently i have the gift of healing and got angels around my last name means angel in polish mm. uh, but um no. so i have all these weird amazing stories of just the power of prayer and the power of listening to so my prayer has been lord show me the, the chest move of your enemy and if you if it's your will let me do something about that mm. in the sense of pray right so this has been my strategy. This is the strategy I'm talking to my mystic friends about. What shall we do now? We know the power of love and the power of prayer. Evo, you know Ho'oponopono. We know what's possible here. Systemic yeah. Ho'oponopono. Yeah. Strategy, laser precision, right? Because this is a very dangerous time. There's no question. Mm. And But it's also a time of great hope and promise and some prophetic people would say we're right on time we knew yeah. this was coming it was just a matter of when what would be the catalyst okay here we are and i if anything i've been asleep i've been like oh in a, in a lull because i've been waiting so long <laughs> and, and so i was like okay here we are and what do we do next which yeah. is the conversation i'll have with anika and john on monday yeah. wonderful yeah wonderful Looking forward to hear that. All right. All right. So, um, as I was saying about the editing, I'm, I'm going to do some editing, and then um, if you want me, I'll send it to you before I post it. And I was thinking about posting it maybe tomorrow. That's fine. You can do it unedit. I I don't do much editing myself, except for like the some the, silly the front end and the back end that will be cut i think and that's it i, I think I, I really enjoy just you know having it well i don't know i don't wouldn't well, even what to add it you know it's but you know what i have to thank you too because <laughs> what i find is you know i like doing podcasts but it's actually nice to to just let me talk like stay, not not that I, anyone needs to hear me talk more in my household but uh <laughs> <laughs> daughter say when I worked with the Inuit years ago up in the Arctic, and her daughter was five, and she said, Dad, what do you do anyways? Uh, she said, I say, I'm a consultant. I sell ideas for money. And she, because I realized these people hunt, you know, they, they go out in the land, and they gather caribou and stuff, right? Plants. But I hunt for money, and, and I sell ideas. She goes, don't they have their own ideas? <laughs> <laughs> it was so busted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but um. What did you want to say about the podcast? You said I. Uh, um, oh no, I was going to say thank you because on, on a same hand, I mean, I could podcast you, right? I could say, "Hey, Shinta, what's your story?" And which okay. is what I'm doing with as many as I can, right? Um, but it's kind of nice to like let me kind of 
let, let my brain kind of people go, wow, you know so much stuff. But but right now it's so important to get these ideas out. And so thank you for the, your platform because it's, you know, it's a reciprocal thing. It's, you know, we're having dialogues of great importance. Yeah. You know. So yeah. anyways, so thank you. Well, you're welcome. Um, and I indeed hope that this is going to be a platform of, of such a, let's see what happens. I really strongly feel to not be so attached to the outcome or the form. Exactly. More committed to being brave enough to have these outrageous conversations. <laughs> well, <laughs> Just but do you're, you're con like the, the fact that you're contemplating, you're asking, right? In a way you're asking permission, I'd say, you know, what is coming? And that's what I asked. I said, in great humility, I am not, I'm not saying I have sp particular powers or anything, but I know the power of prayer. And I know that if I ask for direction, I live in that Lord, I live in the Lord's prayer, thy will be done. It's like, that's it. You know, and love is the only, is the key to everything. So I will pay attention to that and try to be respectful and hopefully not disrespectful. Um, because a lot of people, I mean, I can be accused of being in, insensitive to death and stuff it's like I'm not, I just, I just mm -hmm. know what this is in the end. So it's like, and, and so, yeah, I just, and the people, my wife says, you know, what I engender, what I speak and I've done a lot of speaking is, is hope. Right? Yeah. Um, so hopefully that's what we're doing. And I think that's what we're doing. I think so too. You yeah. Know, planting seeds. I mean, I think so. Yeah. There's so many seeds are just threw on the ground. It's like, right? Yeah. The Bank of England uh, could pick up the seed and go, gee, Mark has a crazy idea. He, he said, not a guaranteed income, but a guaranteed well-being kind of portfolio. Yeah. Let's try it. Let's try it. <laughs> We've got to lose. <laughs> well. All right. I will let you go. Uh, enjoy your day. Thank you. Enjoy your <laughs> night and your, and your lovely children. Yeah, yeah, I will. <laughs> okay. okay. Bye, Mark. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.